Raise your paw if you're okay with cat urine in your house. I didn't think so. We don't want it, and our kitties don't either. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeff Nickel. Cats who urinate in bad places don't stink up our homes because they secretly hate our guts, and they're not spiting their people as retribution for some off-color joke made at their expense. The truth is that most cats who are guilty of this crime suffer serious stress. The scent and presence of urine in the wrong places furthers their angst and ramps up the tension for everybody. Urine soiling is more than an annoyance. It's a drag on everybody's well-being. There are a lot of different reasons for different cats in different households to engage in nefarious urinating. A common cause is feeling crowded by too darn many other kitties. Actually, a crowd of any species with a pulse can be a freak-out trigger for some cats. When I met Cougar, she was a 12-year-old indoor kitty, a big girl weighing in at over 14 pounds. There was a second cat in the home, another female named Flurry. Urine and stool had been found outside the litter pan often, starting two months earlier. It was clear that Cougar was the culprit. With her ample girth, her long-suffering joints had been lugging 50% more load than they were designed to carry. I immediately suspected arthritic pain as a factor. When everybody was settled in the exam room for our consultation, we allowed Cougar out to explore. She appeared to get around pretty well until she decided to jump onto a chair. She bunny hopped over to it, then reached up with her front paws and pulled herself onto the seat. This was not a demonstration of normal feline agility and athleticism. Cougar was a cat who had adapted to her disabilities. As I gathered her history, one of Cougar's people intimated that he'd been abused as a child. He was bonded to both cats in the home, but Cougar was his favorite. He admitted to slapping her nose and rubbing her face in her urine. I managed to keep a neutral expression on hearing this confession. I've learned that people make mistakes because they don't know better. Still, Cougar continued to come to her dad for affection. Besides my responsibility to discourage punishment and to enlighten these folks on healthier behavior modification, I needed to help them manage Cougar's physical challenges. We took x-rays of her hips, her knees, shoulders, and elbows. This poor girl had advanced degenerative arthritis everywhere we looked. Cats never cease to impress me with their ability to fool their families into believing that they're just fine, thank you very much, until it's late in the game. There were other stressors for both cats. They had never had access to more than one litter pan, and it was scooped out only once weekly. It must have been pretty ripe in there much of the time. Now this young couple, early in their careers, had moved often. Most recently, they and their kitties had resided in an apartment with noisy neighbors. To add further insult, Flurry had been mounting Cougar during the preceding two years. Cougar would hiss and growl when receiving these unwanted advances, causing Flurry to chase her around the apartment. These behaviors were a result of stress, and they were the cause of more stress. Everybody in this household needed help. I explained the anxiety triggers and that Cougar and Flurry needed time away from each other. An invisible fence indoor avoidance shield located at the doorway into one bedroom allowed Cougar to catch a break. That's because Flurry wore a receiver collar that prevented her from pursuing and victimizing her subordinate when she retreated to her safe haven. Big changes were also in store for the litter pans in this domicile. We'll talk about that in a minute. After showing my clients x-rays of normal cat joints and comparing them with cougars, I prescribed a twice-daily medication called gabapentin. That's G-A-B-A-P-E-N-T-I-N. Added to this kitty's food, it would control her arthritic pain and her anxiety. Flurry needed to cope better, too. We reduced her anxiety with the palatable daily supplement Zilkeen, that's Z as in zebra, Y-L-K-E-N-E. -E. Long term, everybody felt better, 
bathroom etiquette improved significantly. Cats have been described, somewhat simplistically, as socially asocial creatures. There's some truth to this. They're programmed to live in a colony and can do well indoors with other cats if they were raised that way. And while they are certainly capable of social engagement, the great majority also has a strong need for solitude. If they can't create distance and hide out, they can wig out. This may be manifest by urination and often defecation in the wrong places. Problems with crowding can include outdoor creatures like stray cats and wild animals that people may never notice. Nosy neighbor cats could be antagonizing your indoor kitties by sitting on your windowsills and leering at you and your pets. But four-legged riffraff just being in the area can trigger stress for an indoor cat. Just their scent can lead some homebound felines to lose their grasp of elimination protocol. With behavior disorders, just like any medical challenge, we get our best results by uncovering the causes first. You can avoid this conundrum by setting your cats up for success with sound litter pan management. Do this as early in the game as possible. Getting your arms around the feline bathroom will be essential regardless of what else is happening. Lots of places to pass urine or stool in multiple different locations will allow all feline creatures at your house to always have a clean, unused place where they can eliminate any time they feel the need. Most cats really hate stepping around in a stinky, soggy mess, holding their little noses to get it over with as fast as possible. It just isn't dignified. We want your cats to feel free to drain their bladders and move their bowels as often as the whim strikes. Not only will this make them happy, it will drastically reduce the risk of lower urinary disease. I know about inflamed and obstructed feline bladders. We veterinarians treat way too many of these. The general rule of thumb is to have as many litter pans as you have cats, plus one more. For a one cat household, I recommend two litter pans. For two cats, three pans. I think you get the math. Next, you'll want to make the litter pans enticing. Cleanliness, the type of pans, and their locations play an important role in elimination behaviors. Locate the pans in various places where your cats can easily find them and away from high traffic areas in your house. The laundry room is often the wrong place because sudden bangs and buzzes can frighten a cat at that special moment. One event learning like this can result in soiling problems because a cat can instantly and permanently associate fear with the type of litter or the pan they were using at the moment of terror. Cats need peace during these private events. And don't line the litter pans up in a row next to each other. Cats can be quite particular about the kind of litter. Premium clumping litter is preferred by most cats. Scoop the pans at least twice daily and wash them with a mild soap once a week. Avoid harsh chemicals. The lingering scent of ammonia or bleach can be aversive to cats. There's a product called Cat Attract that can be a helpful additive to a litter pan. Cat Attract can't solve a house soiling problem alone, but it appears to make clean litter pans more, well, attractive. Cat Attract is available at pet supply retailers, and you can also find it online. There are a few common causes of litter pan problems. Pans or boxes that are too small, they are less prone to get used. Sweater boxes work well for cats who like big boxes and research has shown that most of them do. Use a utility knife to cut down the height of one area of the box so your cats won't have to pull vault to get into it. Hooded and covered litter pans are shunned by many cats. Odors get trapped inside, and it's hard for you, the litter pan janitor, to see that scooping is needed. And litter pan liners can feel weird on cat feet and can discourage use of the litter pan. Location matters too. Litter pans that are stuck in a place without an easy escape route can set up a lower ranking cat for an ambush. This can be almost as bad as a shy cat finding himself stuck in a hooded box when he needs to get the heck out of there. Dirty boxes, meaning that they're not getting clean frequently enough, are a prime cause for urination in bad places. 
It's important for a cat to know that she's doing the right thing too. If you see your kitty using the box, take the time to reward her with verbal praise, play, or treats. Your cats love you. They like it when you tell them they're good. And finally, avoid punishment. If you see your cat urine spraying or soiling, go ahead and attempt to stop him, but avoid harsh reprimands. Punishment or triggering a cat's fear would cause him to feel worse and continue soiling. I hope you found this information valuable. You're welcome to share this podcast with any of your cat-loving friends. Each week, I produce a short video, a podcast, or a blog to help bring out the best in pets and their people. You can sign up at no charge on my website, drjeffnickel.com. That's D-R-J-E-F-F-N-I-C-H-O-L dot com. And when you do, I'll send you my free at-home pet first aid and CPR guide. I'm Dr. Jeff Nickel. Mm -hmm.